not have a core of lumpers supporting them, they never could have accomplished what they did. Unlike today, like today's fishing, the crew that goes fishing, they come back, they offload their own fish. When those guys are done putting uh, 300,000, 200,000 pounds of redfish aboard, and they get back to the dock, they, they step off of the boat and the lumpers would take care of that, right? Yes. You must remember that a vessel like the Benjamin C coming back after a 10-day trip, the only thing in their minds was to get ashore and have two days off because they landed the fish on Monday and they were bound on Wednesday afternoon after 2 o'clock Union Rules for another 10-day trip. Think about it. Think about it. 26 trips a year, 10 days, 260 days. You had more time in the forecastle of the Benjamin C or any one of those vessels than you did at home watching your own kids. So ask yourself this question. Who in today's world would even consider doing that kind of work? It's never going to happen again. It's an era that's gone. So I say to all the politicians, when the fishing returns, it's a bunch of baloney. It's never going to return. To know it as we knew it 50 years ago, 60 years ago, it's all gone. It's changed. It's changed. It's not gone. It's just like anything else. It, has to, it had to be consolidated. They couldn't fish at that rate no. and sustain it. We started out in 1945 after the end of World War II. Think about this. Ipswich Bay was full of whiting. Full, absolutely full of whiting. To uh, caches, tobins, all the all the the fishing grounds close to the Cape Ann were literally filled with redfish. It was an undiscovered resource. The Portuguese fishermen caught redfish on the trawls in 1938. They didn't even know what they were. They invented the filling method, how to process redfish. They took that fish home and made chowders out of it and fried it at home. The Portuguese were the pioneers for red fishing. Okay? There was an undiscovered, undiscovered body of fish there because they were fishing with trawls and jigging and netting and so forth. And the redfish were there all the time in large bodies from Cape Ann all the way to Newfoundland. And it's that resource that we that at the end of 1945 when our fleet there were there were periods in there were periods in those years where vessels were being introduced to the fleet on a weekly basis. The Whiting Law, Fisherman's Law, where we have two or three boats tied up. It makes me tired when I look at it. I almost cry. We had fifty vessels in the Whiting Association, in the Gloucester Whiting Association in nineteen fifty one when Ray Kershaw, Kershaw was employed as the business manager. He ran that organization. The men were too busy buying, buying, uh, catching fish. He was the one that was buying the engines and the nets on a, on a, on a, on a volume basis. He ran that show down there. There were 50 boats that participated. In, and these were day boats that fished in the Ipswich Bay. Okay? We were landing, we were welcoming new boats. What was an average, like, for Gloucester, total fish landings back in, say, 50, in the 50s? Uh, uh, how many pounds of fish came into this port on, a, on, a, on, a, on an average day, would you say? Uh, that's hard to say, but I will say that we, uh, in the summertime, in many days in the summertime, it was an ordinary average day when a million pounds of fish would land. Easy to do. Three or four boats landing 200,000 pounds of fish. And that was in the daytime. At night, the whole sailing fleet was landing pogies at the fish pier at Ida and Joseph, Natalie III, Serafina Inn, Rockaway. Uh, all these boats were landing two and 300,000 pounds of, of pogies every night. And they worked from 5 o'clock in the afternoon until 2 or 3 or in the morning, taking them out by. by by clamshell, so that the vessels were washed down and ready to go at 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the morning for another day fishing for bogus around. So there was millions of pounds. The dehydrating process companies, which were two, when we talk about Neptune Harvest, they're camping out down there. There was the dehydrating, pro I don't, I, you want the truth, I'll tell you. There was the dehydrating process company, which I worked for, 
from 1951 until 1956, 20, uh, uh, 12 hours a day from May until September processing pogies and the Gloucester byproducts which was a combine between the Empire Fish Company and the Cape Ann Fisheries and several other independent companies to just handle their redfish uh, go, okay? Then they jumped into the pogey business and along with Eddie McLeod and so forth uh, sponsored several uh, tag and What were some of the products that they made uh, at the Dehyde plant? At the Dehyde they made three, basically they made three products. They made fish meal, which is the product I worked on. We also made a... What's fish meal? What is fish meal? To feed animals and stuff like that? No, uh, uh, yeah, fish meal was to feed, uh, 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 to fer it was a fertilizer, I'm oh, sorry. Fertilizer, okay. Then they made a liquid fertilizer called solubles. That was the, that was the part that was uh, uh, so... Uh, uh, concentrated? Concent uh, so it, it couldn't be dried out in the dryers. So that part that was left in the dryers was a soluble. And of course they made oil, fish oil. And the fish oil uh, was used in the manufacturing of paint. The solubles was used in a, in a fertilizer and, and the dry fertilizer was the fish meal. Okay. So they basically made three products okay, at the dehydes. And those, co those companies worked, uh, you know, May, June, July, August, into September, 24-7. We had two shifts down there, two 12-hour shifts. You went in at 6 in the morning, the 6 at night, and so forth and so on. Oh, unbelievable. But, unbelievable. But, that was, but this port was... Uh, this port, we had, we had 4,000 people employed. Figure it out, 200 vessels, say an average of 10 men a vessel. There's 2,000 people. We had all the support industries. We had three railways, each with two tracks. There were six tracks operating. Now we haven't got any tracks down on Harbor Loop. Those are four are gone. Parkhurst and Brenham's railways are gone. They're now the Coast Guard station. The Rocky Neck has just been shut down over there. They have two tracks going. They're, they're, the, they're open, though. They, they, they're open, but they're, they've, been, they've been curtailed their operation by the EPA because of the contamination from sandblasting the boats and so forth and so on. So there's a movement afoot over there to restrict their operations even more. I understand as of last Thursday I heard oh, this. Oh, I didn't one. know that. Okay. So that's another thing. And of course we have Roses which does the, uh, a larger part of the, of the maintenance business. So what, if you just off the top of your head, what, what do you say the percentage of activity in the fishing industry is today compared to what it was in the 50s? Figure it out. We landed four or five hundred million pounds of fish annually. How much do they land today? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a hundred million pounds? Yeah. I don't know. And to land that hundred million pounds of fish we're talking about, I had a lady, a woman